My experience to date working as a freelancer has been when it's a news assignment, it's breaking news or supplemental coverage. The work I do is in addition to what the staff are covering. But this is a work week, five days consecutive, where I'm covering for a staff position until they, um, I guess, assign someone new internally to cover. So four local days of work, and then one day was slightly out of town with a hotel stay. So this is a little bit slower pace than what I'm used to on a news assignment. Traditionally, when I get the call, it's breaking news and panicked, and I'm supplemental coverage, or I'm covering until the staff can fly in and relieve me, so that means long hours. But this was like a normal work shift, you know, eight hours or less each day. The shift I'm covering is Saturday through Wednesday. Saturday and Sunday are evening news, so we start at about 1600 and go to as late as 2200 or 2230, maybe 2300, it just depends which shows take us. Same for Sunday, and then Monday we start at 04 a.m., and we may go right through until lunchtime, but some days we get off and relieved uh, as early as 10 or 11. Okay, this is an 18 minute vlog and I'm gonna stop the narration and just let this thing play out with Nat Sound. Enjoy. To the grass. Oh, we can just leave it there, I guess. Or you can, yeah, let's go to the grass. There's more bits to remove. Now, does the official still face an uphill battle when it comes to extending Section 702 back in Capitol Hill? Is there still a bipartisan group of lawmakers that still for the disadvantage for them? So now the CIA wants to utilize a tool that they've used right after 9-11 that allows them to spy on foreigners without a warrant. My program, there's still a group of bipartisan lawmakers that believe that this surveillance program was misused in the past. Light panels at 75%. 
300p is set to 30% with a slight spot in. And I would say the 300 is not as bright as the 300. Or sorry, the Astro is not as bright as the 300 at those particular settings. Getting closer to sunset. There's an overcast layer now. So we're going to wrap the 300 and put a second Astro in its place. Well, good morning, Marky. Well, the Trinidad that I want gang is Venezuela's most dangerous gang. And according to federal officials, this members of this gang are taking advantage of the ongoing border crisis. Now, this comes as Florida Senators Rick Scott and Marco Rubio are urging the Biden administration to Miami, they're everywhere. Now, this comes as Florida Senators Rick Scott and Marco Rubio are urging the Biden administration to formally designate the Trinidad gang as a transnational criminal organization, Mark. Got to throw the lever on that one. That's a manual. Okay. Bubble out. Back. It's, it should be balanced. Unlock the tilt and tilt it. I set it up in the driveway. Wow. Just do an extreme tilt. Let's see. And let go. And it should stay where you leave it. Yeah. All right. So power up. And then I would recommend you zoom out to as wide as it goes 200. Because it's too hard to find the uh, sun at 600 mil. like an app grab an apple box so you can sit because you're gonna have to track it or i guess you can just use a patio chair uh where can i see the focus you're zooming right now that that lens is backwards zoom and focus oh you're you're focusing my bad okay i'm at infinite and then magnify to double check your focus uh, once you get in position uh, that might be it stop as i said uh, is Texas, and we have got our correspondent, Allie Bradley. She is in Del Rio, Texas right now, Allie. I was looking at the NASA image. I, you can, you're starting to see the partial eclipse at this point, it seems. And you found someone who drove 20 generations of small towns across that path. If not to be laughed at, it's going to be substantial, but they can't depend on it.
pushing my luck with this small rig touch and go. It's way too much pressure leverage out here, but it was a 15 minute drive home. Zero four fifty, day four or five. We got one hit, five o'clock hour, and then we're clear for one to two hours. So we're gonna pack it back up, go get breakfast, and then for our next hit, we should have a little bit of sunlight, so we can go with a bit more interesting background. So for this first one, I just get the Astra lighting up the forest in the background. And the second Astra is working as, this, we'll call it the key light. Got a newer panel for Phil. And Beck's putting up a backlight, which will also be a newer panel. Now that I've been using the Astras for several days, after being away from them for a couple of years, I'd forgotten they're, when they're dimmed down near minimum, which is what I'm doing for this first shot at ISO 10,000 F4, when they're down, say from 15% down to minimum, they get very magenta, where the newer panels stay much more neutral until they cut out at the bottom. So for low light work, newers are preferable and uh, the Astros certainly have a little bit more punch than the newers. Jorge Ventura has more for us this morning. Jorge, a lot of money is headed to the men and women protecting our front lines and our border. Hey, good morning, Mark. Yeah, that's right. According to U.S. Congressman Henry Cuellar, $81 million is going to Operation Stone Guard. This will provide federal funding to local law enforcement, like here in South Texas, to local law enforcement working the border, providing security. We are officially working in the rain. Talent's taking a nap. I'm just powering up for our next hit, but we may be bumped due to breaking news. Hey, Marnie. Yeah, that's right. And a key component of this new bill, according to uh, Congressman Henry Cuellar, is he got $81 million in funding for our colleagues in Congress to push for more funds and technology and towards hiring more Border Patrol agents. He emphasizes that many of these migrants do not qualify for asylum because they are not fleeing persecution based on religion or political beliefs. Rather, they are primarily seeking economic opportunities in the United States. Lawmakers and how to proceed with all this. Yeah, quite a bit of buzz in DC as always. Tom, thank you. In San Diego, one community really feeling the impact and the strain of increasing immigration. High volumes of migrants have consistently overwhelmed Border Patrol with the San Diego County Supervisor saying at least 125,000 migrants have been released from detention into the city 
in just the past six months. Jorge Ventura joining us now from Eagle Pass, Texas, with an update. Another border community, Jorge, here feeling the strain. What else have you learned? Yeah, that's right, Marty. Well, San Diego has spent millions of taxpayer funds meant to address the migrant crisis. The situation has got so bad that the county ended up running out of those funds and was forced to close a migrant welcome center. Well, I'm on day five and the early morning hours and lack of sleep has caught up to me. I forgot last night. I thought of it several times while I was driving to top off the drone batteries. And I didn't, so I only had like 60, 65% on each battery because they store in a discharge state. New to me, but good to know. Uh, smart controller was good, it was basically topped off, but just did my first drone flight and uh, I got another one coming up in about 40 minutes. All right, we're gonna do a live bump shot here on the border in Eagle Pass. This is my second one. And we are up and streaming in the driver's seat. It's pretty great. It's about 75 degrees. It was 59 when I got up this morning. It's a little chilly, I had to wear my winter jacket. Now, you know, 22 years as a Southern California resident and four years in South Texas, it gets below 70 degrees and I need a jacket. 